record. Okay, so thank you for attending the Mastering Enhanced Blackboard Ultra Documents <laughs> workshop, which I realize now is quite a long title. Um, essentially, this workshop is going to be an exploration and tutorial on the new uh, Ultra Documents. Um, and then I'll, I've added in some time here that you can test the feature out as well, and um, we can troubleshoot or um, look at other possible issues that may arise uh, as we work through them. My name is Kevin Harris. I'm the Instructional Support Coordinator here at CIDL. Um, my email is listed there. Uh, feel free to reach out with any questions or concerns that you may have. It's kevin.harris at niu.edu. Uh, and then the agenda for today, we're gonna look at how to create documents uh, in case you don't know. Uh, we'll look at adding content um, as well as editing. Uh, the new Ultra documents have the ability to resize and uh, move objects around. We'll look at how to upload files, how to convert files, which is a, a new addition to this. We'll do some testing, uh, and then we'll have some time at the end for questions, uh, comments, concerns, uh, or anything else. Um, I think this will probably take us about a half an hour. I don't imagine it'll go much longer than that, um, but we have the full hour, so if you wanna stay on and troubleshoot anything or work on some projects, we can do that as well. Uh, so just really quickly, how are you currently using uh, the document feature in Blackboard? And if you'd like to unmute and speak, you may, or you can throw uh, a response in the chat as well. Kevin, I'm not sure what you mean by the document feature. What does that even mean? Yeah, so do you, do you currently use documents uh, within Blackboard? Sure, so you have the I upload documents all the time, yeah. I post PDF uh, or videos or things like that. And do you use that within the, the document feature in Blackboard or you just do a direct upload into Blackboard with the PDFs that you may already have? Apparently the second one because I don't know what you mean by the first one. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, good. So using it to share links, uh, awesome. And so uh, what we'll do now for the next, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes is I'll do uh, just a kind of a demonstration of the tool uh, and how I'll give you a, an idea of what it looks like. And I can also show you what it looked like in the past. Um, and then we will work on testing it out uh, in your own courses. So let me grab this. Okay. so. Um, the new document feature, so the old document feature would have looked something like this, and this came from the CIDL template. Essentially, everything was in one block, uh, and you could kind of build, um, and, and you could add and edit things here. You could add links. You could add, uh, you could attach documents in here as well, um, but it kind of gave you this format, essentially like a, like a standard uh, text editor, Word document type. Um, layout. You didn't have the ability to really customize or move anything around other than kind of up and down in this in this uh, format here. Um, with the oh, let me see that pop back up now. Yeah, so I think now with this new document, it's going to give you more flexibility, more flexibility, flexibility, I'm sorry, like you would have uh, in a Word doc, uh, but it's gonna be kind of more uh, natively embedded into Blackboard. Um, so we'll, we'll take a look at it and uh, see how it might work for you uh, and when it might be useful to use. So this is what it had looked like, um, but now we're gonna have the ability to actually edit this. Um, and then essentially we can resize and adjust um, content to fit in a, a number of blocks. If you saw when I highlighted this, there are actually four different um, columns there. And so we can resize, uh, we can move things around, we can add images in uh, and build a little bit more of a dynamic document um, using this new tool. In addition to that, we also have the ability to uh, convert files. So if you have some things in a Word doc and you want to um, upload them into these documents or a PDF, uh, you can do that as well. So let's close that. 
Uh, and just before we jump in, here's an example that was created by uh, someone at Blackboard uh, for what this might look like. So this is, they use this to create a uh, module overview. And you can see that they've used kind of two of those columns to um, work on uh, the layout. Can I ask a question, Kevin? Yes, so please, that, Al. that example that we were just looking at from Blackboard. That's yep. just an that's just an image of text, right? Still, uh, this, this is yeah. This is this is just a file that I uploaded, a screenshot okay. that I took of so, something that's so, created. Okay, so basically, this when you said convert documents, it made it sound like it was going to scan it for OCR or do something that would make the document available at the same kind of accessibility level that web text, you know, normal web pages, yeah. text on a normal web page would have. But that's not yeah, actually- Yeah, we can do that too. Right? That, that's not well, what that I did here. I just put this up for an example, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, this was just a sample of what it could look like. Uh, I'll show you that feature on how to actually convert something in uh, and uh, we can kind of mess around and see what it will actually look like and how it will work in your course. Yeah, this was just a screenshot to, to show you kind of a layout that you could achieve with this, uh, with the new tool. Um, so to create the documents, you just find the plus sign, uh, click plus, click create, and then click document. Uh, and what you'll see here now is when the first time you open it, you'll have this uh, selection here at the top where you can add content, you can add HTML, you can uh, upload files into this, which will give you essentially a link to uh, to the file where you can, you can view it in line or you can download it. Uh, you can connect to the cloud. Uh, or you can do uh, use this convert a file feature. And we'll come back to this one in a minute. When you click content, it gives you this text editor that's familiar. Uh, it looks like the text editor that exists throughout Blackboard. Um, and then we're just gonna well, add something like that. Uh, so you could have a title at the top of the page. Uh, and then that can kind of be its own box. We could also, like I said, if you hover over it, it'll turn purple and you can click on these sliders and adjust it to fit a combination of those four columns um, that are present. Then you can click plus and we could add more content here. And let's say we want to add a paragraph in. We can add it in like that. We can adjust that over. Um, and we'll add another one. And this time I'm gonna just add an image. And then you can choose if you want it to be uh, view only, view and download or download only. And I'm going to adjust this down. And then if you, when you hover over it, you'll see this little purple box at the top and this one with the six dots in, you can click and grab and then drag and drop um, it in like that. So uh, you can add text, you can add images. If we want, we can also add YouTube videos in here by clicking uh, content again. Uh, and this could be other types of videos files as well, but we're gonna use YouTube for this example. Let's just go. And you can, you can add the, um, the videos in here as well. And again, this could be adjusted. So if I want to shrink that down and move this image over here, I can then kind of drag and drop these where I want. So it provides, uh, essentially you have significantly more flexibility than you would have had uh, in the old format. So I can kind of move those as I want. And let's do one more. And I'm gonna add just a file. So I'm going to click the file upload. And let's say I just want to add uh, this word doc. And I'm going to put view and download. And now I can adjust that and drop it in here. And then if they want to, once I hit save, if we want to access this, then we can then open it up um, kind of here within the box or it can be downloaded from there. 
Um, so th this is essentially the, the main idea. Is essentially you have the ability to create these blocks and then move and adjust those blocks uh, as you see fit. Um, this then also will um, connect to Ally. And so students will then have the ability to download uh, alternative formats of your document. And you can also, it'll give you kind of a readout of the uh, how accessible it views your document to be. Um, let's, oh, so then once you have a document created, um, let's say we have it here and we wanna go in and change something, um, you just come up here to the upper right-hand corner and click edit with the pencil and it will open it up and allow you to edit it from here. Uh, and then there again is that uh, accessibility score from Ally. Um, the other main feature uh, is uh, what you were asking about how if I go to create and I click document here. Now, if I want to convert a file, I can click convert. I can choose a uh, document here. Let's just go with, so this is, we'll do, we'll try a couple of different document types. This is a Word doc. And so it's pulled in my Word doc, all the parts of it. And now I can adjust this as needed. So if I wanted to, um, let's say I wanted to break out the title, I can click the plus and content. And I consider this. And then I could also, if I wanted to embed these videos, I could then adjust, uh, again, the width of this column, and then I could add the videos out here onto the side. Um, and it gives you the flexibility to do that. And then, so that's a Word doc. And the Word docs come in pretty easy. Uh, PDFs can be a little bit more tricky. Um, so let's cancel, let's save this. Uh, let's add the plus sign, create, document, convert a file, and then we'll choose a PDF. So we'll grab this old syllabus, uh, and then it's pulled it in here. And so now you can edit uh, the blocks. You can, again, you can add and change the blocks, cut and, uh, copy and paste this into different blocks if you wanna kind of break out different sections of it. Um, and again, you can adjust and add uh, other content blocks to this. And then I think I have a PDF that's slightly more complex than this one. Let's pull that in and see how it works. So if you have a, an old syllabus that's, that's a PDF doc that you wanna drag in, you can now do that. If you have other assignments uh, that were, uh, or documents that were Word docs, you can drag and pull those in as well. I'm gonna try one more here. And let's go. I think this one's a bit more complex. Uh, so, yes, so, um, that, that once this converts, I'll show you. The, the document that I showed, the very first document, is an, a document that was created in our template uh, prior to this update. So they will still look the way that they looked before, um, but you can open them now in this new document uh, feature, which is the only one. So when you click documents, it's just this now, um, or you can just open it in your course, and then um, you have the ability to edit it um, using these features, if that makes sense. We'll give this a second. This is a larger document. Hey, Kevin. Um, I got a yes. question while that's uploaded. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I'm curious about editing the document that you just uploaded, either Word document or um, PDF. Uh, using mm -hmm. the content editor, does it provide any uh, real-time accessibility indicator of your document? I believe you have to save it, uh, and then you can reopen it. Okay, okay. Give me one second, because I think if I click out of this, it's gonna... Sure, yeah, no, right. It. 
Thanks. This is a, a pretty large PDF. I probably should have picked something. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm going to jump out of this uh, so we're not wasting our time on it, but I'll come back to it. Um, so yeah, if I go into one of these here, I can get that accessibility score there. And then I thought it also gave it to me at the top. So like with that view right there, um, if you edit that, um, then once you click edit, do we see any accessibility? Okay, so- I can't get that little text box to pop up, but you do get this here. And then here, and then it's showing me here where okay. my lower, because these are um, just fixed screenshots from, from College Board. Right, right. So let's see if I delete if I delete these out, if it will. Adjust. Ah, yeah, yeah, so it adjusted right there once I took them out. That's good. That's good. Thanks. So that that's essentially the, the main changes that are that currently uh, exists. So this is now live in Blackboard, and this is what the documents now look like. Um, I'm going to show you before we get off the call that next month there, there's also going to be um, an additional option in here, which will be knowledge check. And so you can add multiple choice questions uh, to your document, which might expand uh, the uses. And um, uh, going back to, to your comment here, Megan, that this might provide uh, more of an incentive or a reason to use the documents as opposed to just embedding um, a Word doc. And now you can build in some kind of comprehension uh, questions to kind of check student understanding as you go. And I think that's kind of where they're moving uh, with this, with this feature. So uh, what I think is, would be a good use of our time uh, is to maybe take the next 10 minutes uh, and test this out on your Blackboard page. Um, and my recommendation will be do one of the following, either build a document from scratch, convert and edit a file, or edit an existing document that you already have. Uh, and then as you're doing that, um, think about what worked well, what do you think could be improved? Um, and we can pass that information on if you have any suggestions. And uh, what is missing? So is there other features that you would like uh, to exist within this editor that don't currently exist. Uh, and we'll take about 10 minutes and do that. And then if you come up with something interesting I want to share, we'll do that um, in around 1030. So I'm going to turn off my mic uh, and let you work on this. If you have questions or you run into issues while you're working, just unmute and we can kind of work through those. Uh, did anybody find anything that worked well uh, or that they would like to see improved from your testing or any questions or challenges that you faced? Kevin, I uploaded the PDF. It was a pretty straightforward PDF and it worked really well. It, it translated very nicely into my document. Yeah, great. Yeah, and it's nice too because once you pull in a PDF, then you can now edit it a little bit. Uh, it's a little easier to edit than it than it would be trying to edit a PDF. I think. Yeah. So good news there. Yep. Excellent. Anything else? Anybody else have any observations?
Okay. Um, so some possible uses that I think uh, you might find. You might use this for your syllabus. Um, you could use this for the module or unit overview, uh, like the screenshot that I shared. Um, especially next month when the content uh, or the comprehension checks come in, uh, you might use this as a, as a uh, essentially a content chunk or, or kind of like a self-contained lesson. Um, I taught high school for 11 years. Uh, this is certainly some way that I would have used this. You could have built out kind of a, a class worth of activities all in one space with some comprehension checks. And you may link to different documents or videos or so on, all right there in one space, um, which means students then don't have to leave this to go somewhere else and find something, um, which in my experience <laughs> led to uh, greater rates of uh, completion. Um, you could use it for class readings, daily lessons, uh, or Anything else? Does anybody else have other ideas on how you might use these? Well, you know, Kevin, I'm I'm thinking um, this would be really great to be able to upload various PDFs or documents that I'm using in a course that I teach. And then once I get that in there, I could also create test questions or assessment questions um, using the AI generator based on that content. Um, so that could be a neat, neat way to create comprehension checks. I know that you mentioned that tool is going to be coming out soon. But, mm -hmm. you know, um, in the meantime, one could still just create tests create a quiz and um, I don't know, it just seems to be a little bit more interactive way of engaging learners and making sure that they have read what you want them to read. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. I really like that idea uh, of using, you can build in here in this document. Um, if you have a PDF, it's now more accessible than it would have been as a PDF document. And you can use um, essentially the content picker when you're creating an assignment with the AI tool uh, and then pull questions. Uh, from there. That's that's great. I think that's a great right. use case. Yeah, that's really good. Yep. Yep. Excellent. Uh, anything else? Here we go. Okay, good. Um, how about any features that you would like to see added? Any ideas there? We can, if you if you have any, we can add them to the idea exchange, um, Blackboard's idea exchange, which is where they pull, uh, the, I think, the vast majority of their updates uh, from that that board. Yep, great. Thanks, Evan. Um, and this is the time I think we can wrap it up. Uh, if you have questions or you want to explore this further or need support with this or any other uh, issue in Blackboard, you can reach out to us here at CIDL by emailing CIDL at niu.edu or going to uh, the web link CIDL.niu.edu slash conversations. You could also email me directly, uh, kevin.harris at niu.edu, and uh, we can set up a time to either schedule a call or um, I could shoot a little screencast, whatever whatever you may need uh, to help solve the challenges that you're having. Uh, we host a number of workshops every month, uh, ranging from uh, simple, like how to use Blackboard or getting into, if you're new to Blackboard, to uh, more specific pieces uh, within Blackboard like this. Uh, and we also have other workshops on uh, teaching strategies and um, other areas related to teaching and learning. Uh, and we have, uh, in addition to that, uh, our website, niu.edu slash CIDL, um, where we have a tremendous number of resources related to teaching and learning, as well as uh, specific resources for Blackboard. So if you have any questions uh, or concerns or need support, uh, feel free to stay on the call. If not, thank you very much for coming, uh, and we look forward to seeing you in future workshops. <laughs>